Matilda, you said you wanted to talk? Whoa, what's with all these expensive necklaces? Why do you have them all laid out like that? Pretty, right? I'll let you choose whichever you like. Huh? Why would you do that? Just choose. I want you to have one. I'm not going to accept a gift like that without a reason. Even with a reason, I'd probably decline. Look how gorgeous they are, though. Wearing beautiful things gives you energy. Maybe for you. Yes, for me. Why would it be any different for you? Because to me, those are just fancy decorations. Take this one, for example. How did you come by it? This was the first necklace I picked out for myself. It doesn't suit my style nowadays, so I don't often wear it. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. The sentimental value of each one. These necklaces are nice and all, but I don't have any special feelings or memories about any of them. But this charm, it's packed with things I don't want to forget. Captain Gerald's teachings and a lot of memories, too. Even if, to you, it's just a dirty hunk of wood. Hmm, I do understand. But still, you're not going to be very popular with the boys if you keep wearing that dirty old thing. <laughs> like I care about that. You can drop the whole stony face to act. Come on, I'm offering to help you here. I could even make a charm for you as a gift if you're really hung up on sentimental value. Make a charm for me? You do that? Sure, why not? I don't want you to be alone your whole life. Besides, this happens to be a talent of mine. It'll be really, really cute, so you'd better wear it. Sure. I can't just accept a gift for nothing, though. I'll make one for you, too, if you'll teach me how. And I'll put plenty of feeling into it, so when we exchange them, it will really mean something. Oh, that sounds lovely. I'll gladly teach you how, but... Make me something cute, okay? I'll see what I can do. I've eaten many meals in my time, but this is divine. Oh, exquisite! This is exactly the meal I've been craving. I am pleased to dine with such suitable companions. Is there such a thing as an unsuitable dinner companion? is delicious! My absolute favorite! My favorite meal at my favorite cost. Free. Gotta love this place. Wow. This is all kinds of tasty. Hey friend, thanks for joining me when I had to deal with that mess a while ago. You were a real help. I wouldn't say you fully earned my trust, but you've earned something for sure. I owe you. I can't not worry about it. I don't like owing people. I guess I'll just have to surprise you someday.
I was just rummaging through what we recovered from the scorpions, and I stumbled across something pretty special to me. It was under lock and key, so those thugs probably thought it was something of high value. The Elder gave it to me when I was small. Losing it really got me where it hurts. I guess it couldn't hurt to tell you about it. Can't quite remember how old I was. But my mother had taken in an elderly man wandering the town. He was worse for wear, could barely even walk. She nursed him back to health under a humble roof. In return for her kindly gesture, he taught me to read and write. This notebook is a relic of those times. Not too long after that, I came down with a terrible illness. We had no money to speak of, so a doctor's visit was out of the question. My mother went everywhere asking for help, to no avail. And then the Elder stepped in and saved me. I don't know how he did it, or what it was he did. Long since passed on. Natural causes. I believe it happened shortly after he cured me. My illness, it turns out, was part of a larger plague that swept through our village. So many died. And there I was, having escaped death by some strange luck. I felt grateful. And helpless. So little Yuri figured it would be his mission. To help anyone he could as he grew up. However I could. Not necessarily by making gold rain from the sky, but in smaller ways. The streets are filled with kids who have no homes, no food, so many dying of disease, or some cheap medicine would have saved them. I figure, if I can save even one unlucky soul, well, then I'm doing my part, you know. It's a small dream, but it's one I hold in my heart, to help those who need it. It's what my gang's about. When I recruit my people, it's to that end. To give them a home. The turf wars, the gang, all of it. To honor that dream. Wouldn't you like to know? Despite all I've done, I have my own honor. I don't lie to someone if I owe them. I do what I have to. Whether people view it as fair or foul. The way I see things, the goddess gave me two gifts. My life, and my charm. That's been gift enough to get in with slimy nobles, so I can pull their strings as I see fit. Of course. It wasn't always easy, but in the end, it's all the same little game. Once I used a clever name, and my charms, to become the attendant to the head slug of a noble house. Yet another time, I took a name befitting the kingdom that landed me in the academy as a noble's adopted son. That's how I've gotten this far and earned my fortune. In doing so, I've spread my wings of protection further to help those who need it most. <laughs> as though I tell you, friend. But perhaps you can share what it is you think, hmm? I'm sorry. Did I make you wait? I ran as fast as I could. Mmm. It's a nice smell. I think I love this one. Thanks. Tastes great. Oh? Of course. 
You're such a mystery. Ah, I'm afraid I've stayed too long. Thanks for the tea. Let's plan to do this again sometime. so grateful. The rite of rebirth is finally underway. Time to see if our hunch was right. Ugh, I hope it's not. Then we wouldn't have to fight anyone. Dear Goddess, please protect us. Right or wrong, the clock is ticking. All we can do for now is stick to the plan. You seem a mite too relaxed for my liking. The Goddess's Rite of Rebirth is about to begin. While we are in the Goddess Tower, we are relying on you to secure the locations that are lacking in defense. May I let you in on something, Professor? My brother can be a bit... callous. He told me that he was concerned about you, and hinted that perhaps you would be better off patrolling a coffin. <laughs> That was said in jest, Flame, and in confidence. Please just remain by my side and do not cause any more trouble. As a professor, you would do well to remember that it is your duty to guide your students down the path of righteousness. Please excuse us, everyone. We shall see you again after the ceremony has concluded. Sedith is way too overprotective. He reminds me of my brother. Come on, Teach. I know a hidden spot where we can monitor the stairs that lead to the Holy Mausoleum. If there's anyone down there, they'll be trapped like the rats they are. We'll just have to take them down without getting bitten.
guess was spot on. Looks like we have company. And those central church dasters have spotted us. Buy me some time while I open the seal on the casket. I'm on it. Looks like the enemy is going after the casket in the back. Maybe they're going after the saint's bones? Weird. I'd like to defeat them before they can finish the job. But did you notice? Look closely at the ground. There's some kind of contraption on certain parts of the floor. The smart move is to advance while finding the best fighting positions we can, based on the enemy's weaponry. Stay focused. Death Knight, prove your strength and scatter these fools. I don't take commands or waste my time on weaklings. I'm getting a really disturbing vibe from that guy. No one go near the evil-looking knight, okay? Panic not! Underestimate an outsider. Sally Forth! Yeah! Did the trick! Selling 
board. Leave it to me. I stand ready. I got this. Stay focused. As expected. dwells within? I told you that if you fled, I would not chase you. But it seems you wish to die. Let's get to it. Careful now. Stops. You 
do our part.
We can handle that. You know what to do. Come on, you beat you, beat you. I stand ready. Careful now! I got this. Sure thing. 